breaking the octet rule. Lewis structures continued. Next, we want to discuss examples of drawing Lewis structures for molecules, which do break the octet rule. We'll talk about which atoms do this frequently and then how to draw them. The general guidelines are the same for those that break the octet rule versus those that don't. So check out the last video if you want to go over these again. But more importantly, we want to focus on a couple of bullet points in step three. These are all very common exceptions. They aren't the only possibilities, but they are the ones that you want to recognize as a very likely possibility so that when you do see them, you think about that. So here we have sulfur, phosphorus, xenon, bromine, beryllium, boron, and aluminum. These first four, the sulfur, phosphorus, xenon, and bromine, tend to break them in the high direction. So they have more than eight electrons. Beryllium, boron, and aluminum tend to have lower than eight electrons. And then everything else is pretty much the same. So check out the last video if you need that. Let's look at some examples. There are two ways that atoms can break the octet rule. The first is by having fewer than eight electrons. The common ones that do this are beryllium, aluminum, and boron. Because these have two and three valence electrons, if they do have a full octet, they'd actually carry a formal charge. And this is okay. And sometimes that happens. But there is also stability in not having a zero formal charge, even if that means not having eight electrons. And so we'll see some examples of this in a minute, but these are your typical ones that will carry less than eight electrons. Now let's talk about more than eight electrons. Second period elements cannot have more than eight electrons. For real, do not do it, okay? Second period elements, no more than eight electrons. Now, third period and beyond theoretically can. Um, and theoretically, all of them could. Now, that doesn't mean that necessarily most of them do, just that they could. Given many of them are metals and form ionic bonds, we largely just need to worry about a few. And these that you'll typically see breaking the octet rule are phosphorus, sulfur, iodine, bromine, and xenon. These are your very common octet breakers. Now, let's to get to some examples. First, we have an example with aluminum. We have AlH3. We'll count our valence electrons, three from the aluminum, one from each hydrogen, but there's three of them, which gives us six. We put our least electronegative element in the center. We put our three hydrogens around the outside. And you'll see that that gives us our six electrons. Aluminum doesn't have an octet, but there's not actually even enough electrons to give it an octet. So it's, this, is, this is all complete. Let's check our formal charges just to make sure that nothing crazy is going on. It's, it's a good habit to get into. So for aluminum, it came in from the periodic table with three valence electrons. In this structure, it has zero lone pairs and three bonds. So it gets one electron from each bond which gives it a formal charge of zero. All the hydrogens are the same, so I'm just gonna do one. Hydrogen has one valence electron, and it has one electron in this structure, and so it gets a formal charge of zero. And then that would be same for, that would be true for each of the hydrogens. Let's do another example. Here we have sulfur. Sulfur is one of our common examples that break the octet rule by having more than eight electrons. Let's count our electrons. We have six from the sulfur. We have seven from the fluorines, and there's six fluorines. So that gives us 48 electrons. We'll put our least electronegative central element in. We'll add in our skeletal structures and put each of our fluorines around. And for completeness sake, we can add in each of our lone pairs. 
if you count up each of those electrons, we are going to see that we already have 48 electrons. So all of our electrons are accounted for. Our fluorines all have an octet. And remember, fluorine is a second, second row element. It cannot break the octet. And it doesn't, so that's good. Sulfur is a third row element, and so it can break the octet, and it does. And sulfur was also on our list of ones that very commonly do. And if you remember back to our first Lewis structure video, we talked about sulfur having um, two different bonding patterns. One that's very similar to oxygen, and then one where it has each of its electrons form a bond, and that breaks the octet rule. So you'll see this frequently with sulfur having six bonds. Let's do our formal charges for completeness sake again, and just to double check that everything's okay. So sulfur came from the periodic table with six valence electrons. It now has six bonds and zero lone pairs. So it doesn't get any electrons from the lone pairs, but it gets one from each bond, which gives it a six, which gives it zero. Fluorine has seven valence electrons from the periodic table. It has seven on the structure. And this is true for each of the fluorines. So you could do this six times if you wanted, but I'm just going to do it once to give us a formal charge of zero. All right, let's move on to another one that tends to break the octet rule in the having more than eight electrons manner. Let's count our electrons. We have five from the phosphorus. We have six from the oxygen. We have seven from each chlorine, and there's three of them, which gives us 32 electrons. We'll put our first least electronegative element in the center and place everything else around. Now, if you go through and distribute all of your electrons as is, you would see that we would have 32 electrons and that everything would have an octet. And you might think maybe we're done. But this is where formal charges come in. So let's look at the formal charges here. Our chlorines are all the same, so I'm just gonna do it once. There's seven valence electrons. Each one has seven electrons in this structure, and so it's zero. Oxygen has six valence electrons, but in this structure, it has seven, which gives us a formal charge of negative one. And phosphorus normally has five, but in this structure it has four bonds and zero lone pairs which would give us a plus one. Now, this plus one minus one resonance structure isn't the worst thing in the world. That, that is a thing that happens and it's okay. But if you can avoid it and you could make those zeros, that would be better. And the way that you can do that is by taking two of these electrons off the oxygen and moving it to the phosphorus as a bond, as a double bond. And when you do that, now you'll see that our oxygen has six electrons, our phosphorus has five electrons, which gives us a formal charge of zero and zero. And because phosphorus is allowed to break the octet rule, we can do that. If that phosphorus was something that couldn't break the octet rule, then you wouldn't be allowed to do that. But in this case, we can. And so it's energetically favorable to go ahead and break that octet rule, use that zero formal charge, and make that double bond. To wrap up, we've now talked about how to draw both common octet breaking and non-octet breaking Lewis structure examples. We did the non-octet examples in the previous video. Now these are really, really similar in process. It's just a matter of whether it's okay or not, or even maybe likely or not, for a molecule to have an octet breaking atom in it based on which atoms are there. So this might be less than the standard eight electrons if you're talking about something like beryllium or aluminum or boron, or if you're talking about your third period and below, it could be over eight electrons. And then we talked about the ones that commonly do this. And with that, we'll end this video. And next time we'll talk about resonance structures.